Hey, everybody. So, uh, no intro video tonight because, you know, it's Monday and I didn't get home um, soon enough to get one done. They don't have any technical difficulties, so we've I, got, yeah, no, I don't know. got no prep camera. So, um, action yeah. cam is down. I'm not entirely sure what's going on, but we'll have to troubleshoot just, that. Just being finicky. It's just, it's Monday, yeah. right? So welcome to the Davises Eat and to Rooted in Foods. Um, <laughs> still Nikki. I'm still chilling. <laughs> that hasn't changed. Hasn't at changed least yet. no technical difficulties yeah, no, here. No technical difficulties between the two of us. So that's um, a good thing. Yeah, right. The... Um, You'll probably hear the the lawn guys are outside too. So if you hear not our eaters, lawn guys, yeah. the neighbors' lawn guys, uh, weed eaters and stuff in the background, and yeah. of course you all know that the dogs will traipse in eventually. So oh yeah, they'll bark, they'll they'll make themselves known. It is spooky season. You're all you're all messed up here. Am I twisted? You're twisted, man. Maybe you're all I need some tea. crooked. Um, a little bent. A little bent. <laughs> it is spooky season, and we're. We, we have one more Monday night between now and Halloween that we'll be on, but we wanted to showcase a rather unique cookbook that mm -hmm. um, was discovered by one of our friends. That's true. Um, that is very true. And I got a phone call by said friend one morning mm -hmm. and said, you need to get your butt over here to our farmer's market. Sometimes um, one of our used book dealers sets up at farmer's market and has cookbooks and whatnot. Uh, so I raced right over and... I mean, I'm like, you know, three minutes away from a farmer's market. So it uh, was not a big deal necessarily. Um, and picked up this lovely treasure called a treasury of great recipes by Mary and Vincent Price. And if you're our age or around our age, that name probably rings a bell. Well, that second name certainly yeah. should ring a bell. Um, I don't know if anybody can hear me or not, so I don't know. I hope so. I see your little dial going up and up, but I have mine. I have no idea. Do we have anybody watching that can tell one, us? We got one so person. If you're watching, let us know that you can hear us. Um, it's still, still a little early yet. We don't usually catch yeah. people for a few minutes. But So anyway, yeah, it is it is that Vincent Price. And if you're our age or older, you'll know who that is. If you're younger than us, <laughs> um, I'll, I'll tell you to go Google the, uh, the actor. Um, he had a very long career in character acting and in in our um i guess generation we we kind of know him as a little bit more on the the old school scary horror movie side yeah, um, so. play the invisible man and a couple of other cool characters so very very much involved in the spooky aspects of of hollywood from that perspective so um unique cookbook nonetheless and he was by all accounts, a gourmet cook as well. Really? Um, so like a gourmet that, cook? Mm -hmm. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, about him. so add that to his, mm -hmm. his repertoire. Um, this cookbook caught my eye. Well, I mean, clearly Vincent Price is what caught my eye here, but um, it's a 1965 cookbook, and it is very much a cookbook about his travels, um, where he and his wife were invited uh, to dine by chefs and other, you know, folks of the era. And those of you who know what my day job is in the, the tourism world, um, the culinary tourism aspects of this cookbook are kind of fascinating for me uh, because it's very much ahead of its time mm -hmm. from that perspective and showcases recipes, you know, several recipes from many restaurants all across the globe. Um, where he was invited to dine. And what's really cool is each of those um, restaurants, and then sometimes it was somebody's home, and sometimes it was a museum. Um, oftentimes it was restaurants or, or restaurants inside hotels. Um, they've included menus, which is really cool when you're kind of a, a history nerd like I am to see menus from you know the, the mid-century uh, spots and what was on them. So tonight we are showcasing Caesar salad, mm -hmm. which is not unfamiliar territory to us today, but it would have been, you know, in the 1950s and 60s. Um, we are, however, going to make Caesar salad dressing from scratch, anchovies included. Mm -hmm. I actually bought the little jar of anchovies yes. because I like you got to have, you gotta have, you have that. If you don't like anchovies, you can sub the, the don't, fish don't, and use don't. Um, don't. don't. I, I would anchovies. I would agree because you're not really going to taste the anchovy. No, it turns it's into like salt. this salty bomb. Um, but Worcestershire sauce would be 
an okay substitute yeah. if you don't want to go there. Um, not adventurous. Because guess what Worcestershire sauce is made out of? Anchovies. Yeah. It is. So, but it still gives you that, like, mm-hmm. you know, you mommy bomb. Um, so not unfamiliar for us today, but I'm certainly going to show you how to do the, the dressing from scratch. And we're going to draw eggs and we're just going to, mm-hmm. you know, not worry about things. So, um, and then Steak Diane, which was a very, very popular dish in the 1950s and 60s uh, in this country. Um, very much considered retro today. We don't find it on menus really anymore, but it's super simple and it's delicious. And it's a good way of dressing up a cheap cut of meat. It is, yeah, as long as you've got a you know tender cut of meat because you're we're quick, quick searing. But That's right. um, so I've got four little sirloin cutlets cutlets uh, to do that with mm-hmm. um so i get two and you get one and phoebe gets phoebe one gets one yeah yes now you could we're from southern illinois and those of you who watch frequently know that we have venison in the freezer mm-hmm. would work just as well with a venison loin yeah um venison diane mm-hmm. absolutely yeah. so but before we get into or would the, it be venison deer in I'm just asking. Seriously. Playing the devil's advocate over here. <laughs> All right. Uh, before we get to Vincent and his recipes, the recipes are not spooky, but no. you know, uh, it's kind of a fun, it's a really fun cookbook to look through. But hello. Uh, Mila's just yeah, we've got a grumbly, at the neighbors. grumbly dog out there. Yeah. Um, bear dog. What are we what are we drinking to go with our what kind of a new fashion? We're gonna we're gonna kind of make a little bit of a, a spin on the old fashioned. Uh, which uses bourbon, uh, and we're going to use Canadian whiskey or Crown Royal for, in our house is what we're using for Canadian whiskey. Mm-hmm. Um, I already showed that on screen. Oh, so, cool. Um, From Mama. Uh-huh. And we're just going to kind of make this the, the way you'd make any kind of old-fashioned, but I do need my handy helper to give me some orange slice. Peel. Peel. Yes. Peel or slice. Peel. 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 Okay. Get a knife for that. Okay. Yes. Get a knife. So we have Demerara sugar cubes. These are just little brown sugar cubes of deliciousness. And we put one in the glass, in each glass. And then you take three shakes of bitters. On top of said sugar cube. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. See if I can get you a nice so, little. Yes, please do. Rump. We're going to add. I guess I'm going to have to eat a orange here in a little bit. Yeah. We're going to add two ounces of this wonderful liqueur. Canadian whiskey. Oh, this smells good. Oh, that smells good. Smells so good. Mm-hmm. Here, is that, will that work? That'll work. That'll work perfectly, actually. And we're to use half an ounce. Hello. Hi, R. Busy. Hey, how are you? Half an ounce. <laughs> yeah. I'm using a different pouring utensil. And, oh, oh yeah, there they are. Hard to catch the if you didn't have club soda is there something that you could sub instead um fresca sprite so just any kind of clear carbonated clear fizzy fizzy fizzy, fizzy. ginger ale would probably be good and then we're going to express the orange i just took a carrot peeler vegetable peeler and peeled Mm -hmm. the outer layer off then we're going to Kind of flambe the orange. We're gonna. This is the. You're not gonna part. set it on fire, by the way. No. But you'll caramelize might not be the best word there to use. But do we need ice? Yeah, two cubes. Okay. But I gotta. Stir. And now you gotta do everything first. I gotta stir everything first because the sugar cube has not melted yet. Um. Well, they. Yeah, it won't. Now, I mean, I could get the the absinthe spoon out and you could really go to town there on that sugar cube. (laughs) No need for that. We just want to warm that bad boy up a little bit. Get our bartender spoon out. 
And it's all it, melted now. It uh, dissolved quite quickly there. Mm -hmm. um, so It was that hot lemon, uh, orange peel that did it. Um, so back to the orange peel. I, I'll see if I can and show then, this to you guys. Yeah, not very well. I just took the vegetable peeler around the edge there, but you don't want to get all the way down to the solid white on the citrus or it'll be bitter. Once you do this, you so this poor to orange, eat. you have to eat it. Like I'm, I'll be eating it for dessert tonight because it will not last. Two glass, two cubes of ice. There you go. There is your new fashion. Actually, I'm going to stick this in the fridge. Just in an old fashioned it. way. Um, keep it from... Cheers, my dear. Smell that orange. Oh, it smells so good. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cheers. That's wow. Be dangerous. <laughs> mm. Mm hmm. Oh yeah. That'll clear you. Out and it clear your sinuses out. Clear your sinuses out. <laughs> out. Good. And it will cure whatever ails you. So if you've got the oh, ragweed sniffles. Also, do you hear what R's doing? No. Huh? His cooking group is watching via Zoom so we can talk out loud. Well, awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. That's awesome. Um, Thanks, R. So, yeah, if there are comments or questions that yeah. we don't catch, let us know. Cause... Yeah, because we can't hear you talking in the background, R, so you're going to have <laughs> <Right>? to <laughs> you're gonna have to add in some questions for them, and we'll we will comment on air, and you'll We'll share your question and um so we are down a camera the the action cam that's over the prep area is yep. not not it's, connecting like it's supposed to so she's not wanting to work yeah we'll we'll make do um and talk you through a couple of things so caesar salad romaine lettuce i bought romaine hearts um old school caesar salad they didn't chop up the lettuce they just pulled the leaves off and that's how they um, served the salad with it dressed so we're going to do that tonight um I'm going to talk to you about how to make homemade croutons. We're going to fry some bacon. I'm kind of going to do things step by step so mm -hmm. I don't dirty every frying pan I own. Um, and then we'll kind of walk through how to do the dressing. We'll set that aside and then we'll do the steak Diane. Um, but the steak Diane goes really fast. So I don't want to be trying to do the Caesar salad at the same no, time. No, 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 no. So I have... Um, Stale-ish. Don't want to get breadcrumbs in your drink. I'll take care of that. Um, I'll get this out of your way. Okay. So, to do croutons at home, you can go buy a bag if you want to. But if you've got bread laying around, uh, certainly if it's kind of getting close to the end of it, <laughs> its life, um, croutons are super simple to make. So, this is actually the end of a little loaf of garlic bread that my mom made for us, and it was not stale. <laughs> so to kind of force it to go stale. I cubed the end of the bread, threw this in my air fryer and just kind of let it go until it was a little bit toasty. It still, it still has some give to it. Um, but that kind of, I guess, mimics the staleness that you would get if you, if you really did have old stale bread. Now, if you've got bread um, that you want to use, cube it and just lay it out on a baking dish or something, cover it. So, mm -hmm. you know, your dog doesn't get to it. Um, cover it but leave it out overnight so air can get to it and it will kind of automatically go stale so i just didn't have that kind of time um so we threw these under the air fryer uh, you could throw them under the broiler too if you needed to do that just to get them toasty enough <laughs> that we can throw them in a pan um i have about a tablespoon of garlic infused olive oil oh, and a tablespoon of um, smoke infused olive oil. So the combination is gonna give this a little garlicky, smoky flavor. Ooh. We're going to kind of sear these in the pan until they're nice and toasted, just like you would a, a piece of toast mm -hmm. if you were doing it in a skillet. That sounds delicious. Um, and then once they're out, they'll have that nice coating of oil, a little bit of lacquer on them, and we'll throw some more herbs on top of it. Um, so that's the oiled up pan. Kind of letting this get a little warm so they don't sit in the oil without sizzling for too long otherwise they'll get a little soggy as opposed to yeah, he, toasty. He, 
You need some more sugar. I need more sugar. Why yeah. do I need more sugar? Because you're not sweet enough. It's it's this is don't do this. I don't really good though. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna stick it in my. Um. Okay. Now you could also toss these in some oil and herbs and throw them under the broiler and do it that way. Mm -hmm. This is a little bit more interactive for you guys because you can see it happening. I, must, I wondered about that. Yeah. Turn it up um, to high heat and we're going to watch it. I'm going to make sure that these are kind of on their flat side so we get a nice. So Jennifer is asking anchovies or no? Yeah. Yes. Anchovies, yes. Ta-da! Yes. So anchovies. Yes. Ta-da. Chovies. And they come in jars now and not the little fish tins, so it makes it a whole lot easier to store the rest of them for the next time you need yeah. something. Um, you're gonna have to like that anchovy pasta out. that we are yeah. gonna try one night. Oh. Uh-huh. That but, Chili doesn't know about. That's, I, I like anchovies. Um it's, it's all they are just salt. I mean that's when you really it. I mean there's there's not a bad flavor in it. No, when I pull one of fishy, these fishy, out, nasty. if you if you put them in hot butter, hot olive oil, they like melt. They disappear. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you really just get kind of a salty, briny, just like with an olive. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, you know, similar. Sort of. Um, you don't get little hunks of fish. It just no. all disappears. So, okay. I am going to uh, kind of pre-prep some things here as I right. go. You want me to watch over these? Maybe flip them. Um, yeah, let them sit for a minute. It it'd okay. take you know five right. or six minutes for those. Well, to I can do just their smell thing. the the garlic. I know it smells it, so good. I just. Oh. I am gonna get up. Uh, I love the smell of garlic. Yep, you might as well just put that wherever it needs yeah, to be. It's fine. Yeah. I'm gonna get a bowl for the those little guys though. Yeah. Sorry. I'm gonna get a bowl big enough to toss them in some herbs. What kind of herbs should we use? Um, Caesar salad. So you want something that's a little bit like sage? Um, maybe I've got salt, pepper, garlic. I've got Italian seasoning. Well, you got salt, pepper, garlic. I mean, that's always good. I do. Yeah. Um, Italian so seasoning. Parmesan. Italian seasoning. Who's it? Just use Italian. Oh, there you go. That's, uh, that's not Italian seasoning. No, it's Parmesan. Parmesan. Okay, hold on. You talk. I look. Oh, well, yeah, some Italian seasoning. I mean, I, I, have I mean, that's onion, garlic. I have I have so much, guys. Like everything. We do have lots of different seasonings. So I have garlic parmesan. What would you guys like us to use? I have. And remember, we are eating this, so don't be. Don't kill us. <laughs> yeah. You know, don't don't kill us with. I like have some pretty much any concoction combination that you know a human might need. Everything. Bagel, we do have the uh, garlic Carolina Reaper hot sauce. Rosemary. <laughs> I'm looking for my Italian seasoning. I can't find it. Black garlic Carolina Reaper hot sauce. No. From Bravado Spice Company. Oh, see, your mom says red pepper flakes. Um, I have red pepper flakes. Yeah. All right. I'm just kind of stirring these with a little bit of a spatula Ooh, so I can flip them so they don't burn. Yeah, we don't want them to burn. We just want them to roast um i have red pepper flakes oh there's my italian seasoning jennifer says thyme oregano rosemary Let's see she's how about i've got smoky salt smoked yes salt. that'd be fine too okay so smoked salt and italian seasoning all right there we go okay and some red pepper flakes why not and some red pepper flakes uh how about some malepo sure maybe aleppo peppers that sounds italian <laughs> It's so not Italian. I don't know. It's not Italian. I also Neither have Caesar salad, though. So, you guys, I am not organized. My spice rack is like in, in three, fifteen different locations. It, at least three different locations. Oh my gosh, it's horrible. And I also like my croutons just a little. With a little give, I don't like them so hard so they had, hurt my teeth. So we had red pepper flakes. Somebody's wanting us to bring the pain. 
Okay, we're gonna bring. We the had video. oregano and rosemary. Somebody likes us. We oh. had thyme. It was a good one. Nobody has said throw in the hot sauce, which is I've got crushed lovely. Pepper. There we go. That's perfect. Okay, so we've got Italian seasoning, which has all of the above that y'all yep. mentioned. Yep. And some smoked salt. And some good hot throw pepper. some skips in it. Nah, not with hot pepper. Right. Okay. I think those are done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That one's near near its mark there. Now they have soaked up every <laughs> every bit of olive oil there. Good. So delicious. I may have burned one. I can kind of smell it, but that's okay. Well, uh, let me give me that one, and I'll I'll test it. Oh, I can only smell. Oh shoot! Sorry, guys. Um, Just come over here. I forgot that you guys can't see right there right now. Nope. Okay, so that was several shakes of the red pepper. Watch your fingers. I figured it'd be fine. Okay, so, um, and this is smoked sea salt, so. And yep, a couple shakes of parm. Will kind of melt, but not really. Get some bacon going. Mm, 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 mm. Well, I'm gonna try to there get we some go. bacon going. Sous chef in it. So let those cool before you bite into one. Mm -hmm. Right, so same frying pan. Easier. And it could These are good. profile you want and because of julius caesar so everybody thinks of it hey i know and it just is kind of and it has absolutely nothing to do with it kind of um a unique history for sure uh oh uh oh i didn't She's, do it nick has a scratchy microphone can hardly hear her i can I'm telling you told you last time what we should do and you didn't do it don't blame me okay hold on we'll fix how want to change the battery on Ooh. There you go. Here's that one. Come on, on the same. No, not at all. A little behind the scenes action there, so. <laughs> oh, even better. You right. couldn't see me. <laughs> Fussing with the microphone. Is that better, guys? Yeah, that Let better? me know. Hey. All right. They have a banner on. They're late. They're late. <laughs> That's okay. Hey. We'll forgive them. We'll forgive you. Yeah. We'll forgive you. This means we'll have to show them how to do the drink again. Oh, I no problem. Um, all right, I'm gonna let's go ahead and do the dressing here. And I do need a recipe for this because I cannot remember the proportions, and you don't want to screw that up. Okay. Um, I'm gonna use the end of my garlic olive oil. I've got my blender. And since you guys can't see, I'll walk you through 
So I need uh, about a third of a cup of olive oil. So I'm going to use the end of my garlic, which is about a quarter cup, and some lemon olive oil. So then I don't have to use quite so much garlic or lemon in this, although it's garlic. So we're going to add some more to it. Now I'm doing this in the blender. Yeah. Um, if you were whisking this, I would not do it in this order. I'm kind of out of order where whisking is concerned. I'm looking for Dijon mustard or brown mustard, which I have right here. And your choice, I have a fresh lemon if we want to use lemon. Yep, sure. Fresh lemon? Or the lemon juice. The lemon space. Oh. The lemon space. Okay, I'm going to do... I'll save my lemon. That is. I'm telling you what, that is just as good. Um, this is salt, pepper, garlic. Well, taste test in the two times. That's what you're good. All right. So, roughly a third of a cup of the olive oil, a little bit of Dijon or brown mustard. I would not use plain yellow mustard. I think it would be too harsh. Oh, this is the end of my brown mustard, too. We're going to empty some containers tonight. Woohoo! Mm -hmm. I'm going to put in, actually, there's a lot left in that. Now that I shook it, would you just put that up upside down? Anchovies, we're going to use five. Ooh, they stink like anchovies. Smell like it. <laughs> They're little bitty. You've never put anchovies on a pizza. Boy, you have, though. I have. All right. Would you like to see what they look like? Yeah. <laughs> I got it. I don't want to get it in your drink. Don't do it in my drink. Don't do it on my computer. I'm not going to get it on your computer. So that probably didn't. I hate not having this camera. So, whoopsie. Well, the dog can have that one. All right, so we're going to put, they're little guys, so we're going to put five or six in here. That one wasn't so little. Now, these are in oil, so they'll last quite a while in the fridge. Okay. Um, egg yolks. Which I will crack over here. Just the yolks? Just the yolks in this. Um, mm -hmm. We'll save the whites. Well, I was thinking that as you said it. Um, we're going to save the whites for an omelet or scrambled eggs or something in the morning. So crack on a flat surface, remember, so you don't drive shell up into your egg. You don't need a contraption if you've got your shells are together just use it to go back and forth this is a big egg <laughs> so when you move the yolk back and forth the white falls out um and if you'll just cover that with some strand wrap Ooh, i don't actually think i have any upstairs um, here, put a lid on it right here in the fridge is what I'm trying to get to you. All right. We're going to pop this in. That's going to help everything emulsify, meaning come together in a nice creamy form. And the large word. It's a million dollar word. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We're going to whiz this together. Then I'm going to drop some lemon juice in from the top. Don't make another cocktail. There you go. Uh, then I'm going to add some Parmesan cheese, and then we will be done. So Chili is going to walk you through the cocktail. We have one sugar cube.
Oh. We already have an orange slice so or an orange peel in there. Expressed and burnt. And then half an ounce cooked up. So good. Whoop. Parmesan clumped. You don't have club soda? You use any kind of white carbonated beverage? Fried, pressed wood, seven hours. Sorry, this is loud. Now, a lot of recipes call for mayonnaise, which is what makes it kind of that white or, you know, cream. Um, the egg yolk makes this. Yeah. Or two in this case. I made a little bit more than what one egg yolk would handle. That's still good. Um, okay, so we're going to let that sit until we need it. We'll let that sit. You can have your lemon juice back. Okay. How much lemon juice put in? Um... Couple teaspoons, probably. Couple teaspoons. Yeah. Sorry, I had to think about that. You're not a measuring type person, are you? Not on salad dressing. I eyeball mm -hmm. in a big way. Yep. Yeah. Now this will start to separate, so I'm gonna just I'm gonna there. leave it right here. Do. So when I'm ready to pulse, go, pulse, pulse. I'm kind of thinking I might throw another couple anchovies in it, but that wouldn't be a bad idea. Okay. Now. Wouldn't hurt anything. No. Hurt while the bacon's finishing up, I'm going to cut the shallot because steak Diane traditionally was kind of a shallot butter sauce. Some people add mushrooms um, and it's a little bit more of a mushroom cream sauce at that point. We are not because guess who doesn't like mushrooms? Me. <laughs> so we're going to stick to guy over here. stick to the original. Howard, does anyone in your group have any questions, comments, funny things to say, naughty things to say? <laughs> Anything. Anything to say? Just want to throw, hit us up, what do you want to know? Oh, yeah, I'm happy to answer yeah, questions. Answer questions, ask questions. Um, unfortunately, I did not take time to look up the history of Steak Diane. But I believe. Um, I I want to say it it was created in the UK. Really. I think, oh. but I'd have to I'd have to double check that. I don't remember off the top of my head. I'm sure my mother will Google it real fast and tell us. But look at the why don't you look at the Googles while I'm chopping up a shallot here? Um, so I'm going to dice this shallot pretty finely, so we have a nice consistency in the sauce itself. Oh, you were close. Close, but no cigar. Chavion was said in 1968 to have created the dish with Luigi Fogliano at the Plague Restaurant, or Quad Restaurant in Austin, Melbourne. Well, so here it is in a 1965 cookbook. So that's not accurate. <laughs> Such is life with food history. It was most likely in London in the 1930s. There you go. I was thinking the UK. No, it's fine. That that happens a lot, actually. <laughs> Trying to find origin stories. I don't want the bacon to get away from me here. I, you know what? It may have been created in the 30s. In London, but named in Belgium in the uh, 60s. Well, who knows? And maybe they added the mushrooms. Yeah. All right. 
Would you swap that the skillets there and keep that bacon going a little bit on the other burner, please? Because I need to I need to melt some butter. That's fine. Um, yeah, that's fine. Um, so the bacon is actually for the salad, the Caesar salad. Which after I get the steaks done, we'll put that together at the tail end. Um, now I we chose not to do another vegetable with this, but you know clearly some sort of potato would be appropriate here. What's, or what's kind of baked or mashed. Baked, mashed. Um, you would see asparagus with this too, yeah. depending on where you were at. Yeah. All right, so. I'm going to I see a, actually just pull it because it'll keep going. I got no heat on it. Oh, okay, you're fine. Sorry, I had a fuzzy in the skillet from something. It happens. We got dogs. All right, so into the skillet. I don't need that. I've got generally thank you. I'll get one of these. We're gonna put about five tablespoons worth of butter. And please do use butter. There's just a look at that bacon. That bacon's beautiful. And the beauty of that is I've got a whole bunch of bacon grease now. Yes, you do. Because we're going to sear the steaks in this really quickly. And then so we're gonna like ultra high heat done. Yeah, now I'm not using cast iron because I have a tendency to burn steak when I use cast iron. So I'm just using a regular non-stick skillet that will handle the high heat. So we've got this on high. Yep. And they're going to kind of swim in the butter. Mm-hmm. SP. Uh -huh. So standard salt, pepper, garlic. Hold on. Again, you could use whatever you wanted here, but Oops, sorry. Well, that butter is getting nice and hot. Now, you don't really want the butter so hot that it starts to turn brown necessarily. So kind of watch that, but ooh, that might have been a little a little heavy handed on the on one and not enough on the other. Here we go. Okay. Perfect. All right. All right. My butter is bubbly. These are not barely a half inch thick. So they're going to <laughs> fry pretty quickly. And then we're going to make the sauce with the butter and the shallots. I do not suggest you walk away from this. So we're just going to answer questions for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I never did get a, a crouton. I'll eat one that got a little toasty. Oh, oh, I've been challenged the heck out of it. Mm-hmm. Now, um, in cast iron, these will get a nice sear on the bottom. In this, I probably won't, but that's okay. We're going to, like, cover them in anyway. Yeah. Now, while these are cooking, I'm going to go ahead and drop my shallots in here. You're not going to really need any more butter. Sirloin. Little sirloin cutlets. They were horribly expensive, but I didn't have anything in the freezer that would work for this. And if you wanted to add the mushrooms, now would be the chance. Do you want a medium tenderness 
Actually, I need that for my mater. Oh, yeah. Oh. Ooh. Ribeyes work with this. But ribeyes would work with anything. Mm -hmm. So we are dressing up steak. So Put I a little char on that a, one. A little cheaper cut of meat that you're going to dress up with this Diane sauce or Diane cover. So sirloin is the perfect choice. Flat iron would be really good. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, any, of your, any of your mid end. All right, so we're getting a little bit of a sear on the bottom of these because that butter's starting to, we kind of got it up against the edge. Well, was, yeah. Now, I'm going to show you what anchovies do. Normally, you would put Worcestershire sauce in here, but I mean, I've got anchovies, so we're going to go that route. Yeah. And I'll show you what they do when you drop them in hot, hot oil, well, hot, butter. hot butter, hot anything. Okay. Sure, 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 sure. Um, oh, well, yeah. Man, that smells. I'm sorry that you guys can't smell that. Oh, it smells. Shallots are in the onion family, but they're yeah. significantly... Um, milder. Yeah. And they smell so delicious. I'm going to push the shirt a little bit here. I just, I'm really just wanting these to. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm going to pull the steaks. You don't, they cook fast, but you don't want to, um, ooh, that was not going to be pretty. You don't want to overdo them, but you want them a nice, no, you know, medium rare for me. Okay. Thank you, oven. Oh, okay. Yeah, just keep them warm. Gotcha. Oven's not on. I just put things in there to keep warm. All right, we'll put that in a second. Um, all right, so are we watching? Yep, we're watching. Everybody paying attention? All right, so. I'm going to grab. I'm going to grab what I can grab here because they're packed in pretty tight. Yeah. There's another one for the dog. Oh, right, she's, she's not, not even in here. Yeah. There's a couple. Uh, no, actually, I think she's still outside. All right, so here they are. And you won't even be able to see this happening because the camera is not that close or that good. But they're going to just melt away. I'm going to turn the heat down on this so I don't burn my onions. Yeah, thank you. They have totally disappeared. The smell out of that is incredible. I'm going to still add some Worcestershire because I like the flavor profile of the Worcestershire. And it gives it a little bit dark. Pepper. Yeah. Pepper went in. Thank you. I'm stirring so I don't burn. All right. Guess where that goes now. Are we good? I like the skillet too because it's got a porcelain. Whoop. Okay, here. Here. nope, stop, stop, stop. Trick. If you've got juice, oh, add it back in. Juice. Just add it back in because it just gives your sauce. Yeah, I don't want to get your hands now. Okay. Here. Just trying to show you guys. There you go. Ta -da. Enough for dinner. That's and all that's, we need. That's some trust in your partner right there. Oh, yeah. 
considering I tried to kill you yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and we're just going to put that here. Those can go in the fridge. All right. Now, our incredible. I feel like I'm all over the kitchen tonight, but that's okay. So I am going to chop a romaine heart in half. Put it on a plate. No, I'll chop chop yours. Because when we when we did these to begin with. Yay! Um, they were served like this. Here, I'll show you here. They were served like this. Oh. Okay. But you want me to chop yours? I, I prefer mine. Okay, we'll chop. We'll chop yours. I'm sorry. You're fine. I'm not. No skin off my nose. I'm just one of those odd. Just give me a second and I can handle it. Oh, HOB's got my nose. Bacon. All right. Mm-hmm, not yours. Now, you could do hard-boiled eggs on this. I'm going to put tomatoes on mine. Okay. Oh, before you get hit oh, with yeah, dressing? Okay, dressing. so you like... I want the dressing to cover my croutons. Okay. I'm sorry you guys can't see this. But, you know, we'll get the steak back out here in a minute, too. Oh, I just put it here. Uh, don't set it on the hot stove at a cracked plate, dude. <laughs> Here we go. And yeah, you could toss the the salad in, you know, with the dressing, but considering I didn't quite make it <clears throat> that easy. Let's put that over there. I know. We're Okay, parm. either shred your own parm or... Or go the, the same way we go with lemon juice. Um, shredding your own is actually better. Better flavor. Yes. So, but so I had that, so... Fresh lemon juice. And uh, warm. A third of the bacon. A third? Because there's me and a kid. Yeah, I like half the bacon. Ah, oh, jeez, chili. I'm getting half the meat. All right, there you go. There's that. And there's this. So I go here so people can see it because I don't have a camera over there. <laughs> there's that. And we're going to take a bite. Fork. Oh, good lord. It's a salad fork, dude. Okay. 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 I'm gonna not get a crouton because I know you're not a big fan of croutons. I get a crouton. I can get a bite without a crouton. This is right here. This is oh, this is for this me. This is for you. You're the one that cooked everything. Aw. All right, there's little bites. Here's your bite. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Yeah, my bite. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh oh. I didn't quite get the knife all the way through that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's delicious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's delicious. Hmm. I 
and warm. Yep. Mm. The anchovies, that's not a mm -hmm. typical, but wow, it makes a huge difference because it's so... That and the shallots. Mm -hmm. Jump. That's delicious. Oh. You don't need the mushrooms. No. So easy. Um, this would work with minute steaks too, by the way. <laughs> you could yeah. easily, I mean, it wouldn't be as tender, but it would be good. Mm -hmm. um, venison, mm -hmm. um, tenderloin or loin. Yeah, I that's delicious. That. So homemade Caesar with the egg yolk. In the U.S., we have pasteurized eggs at the grocery store. Yeah. Don't worry so much about it. Um, however, you can use mayonnaise instead if you if you are worried about it. But, um, but yeah, so homemade Caesar dressing, so much better than anything you'll buy in a bottle. Um, no. Use the anchovies, guys. You're not going to... It's not fishy. No. Um, it's salt. Easy. Comes together so simple. Wow. Okay. Oh. Hmm. I am going to love having two of these things. <laughs> that big ass salad. Give me that book again. So, because I didn't show people the cover of it. It's very Vincent Pricey. <laughs> it's so cool. And it's so thick. And it's like restaurants and menus from all over the world. It's a really cool um, look at what we were eating this century, for sure, the in different century. places. And things that are very familiar today, like Caesar salad, mm -hmm. which yeah. wouldn't have been back then by any stretch. So, very cool. We got to remember how big of a celebrity he was. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, there's all sorts of cool things in, in here. So escargot, I mean, stuff that you and I might eat at home, but most people wouldn't, you know, make things like that at home. But um, so, yeah, this is an easy one and something that you can make. Not a problem. In fact, I would. You can what? make this in an hour. <laughs> yeah, roughly. Um, now, the sirloin, I'm, I'm not going to lie. It was expensive because it's already pre-cut and everything. Um Again, it venison by the, pound. by the pound. Oh, yeah. Um, venison, if you hunt and you have some in the freezer, minute steaks would be good. Um, but quick, quick cook on those. I would even go so far as to say the same sauce over thin hamburger patties, like Salisbury steak kind of patties, mm -hmm. as opposed to the Salisbury steak sauce. So there are lots of ways you can kind of manipulate this to make it a little bit more budget friendly. But on Monday nights, we... You know, it's Monday we do night. What we do. I'll eat pancakes tomorrow night. So, <laughs> um, but it's delicious, mm -hmm. and the sauce is delicious. So, and yeah. The salad is amazing. And I'm I'm hungry, so we're gonna yep. we're, we're gonna, gonna hang up. <laughs> we're gonna sign off. And uh, we'll Chili's gonna make week. me another drink. Yep. We'll see you next week, mm -hmm. Monday night. Yep. Um, Tuesday's Halloween, so we'll come up with something fun for you yep. next week. But yeah, maybe a little spooky. It's a little spookier. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll get a little smoky on the maybe cocktail. We smoky, yeah, so. we might do that. Um, so, yeah, thanks for hanging out with us. Try this one. Mm -hmm. Easy. Um, 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 I don't have anything else to say other than I'm hungry. So yeah. we're going to go eat. See we'll see you when we see you. <laughs> Hopefully next week. We'll have our oh, geez. <laughs> I tell you what. <laughs>